our meeting today is taking place on Zoom and is being broadcast by the Peabody Access Television. This meeting is a public meeting. Um, we will have a section near the end for any members of the public who wish to call in. Other than that, it's just a very typical meeting and uh, I think everybody's getting used to Zoom. Just in time for us to go, go in person soon, we hope. Okay. Uh, today, today is a really big day for us. We have um, some new members, uh, new, new folks to be present at our meetings. And I'm going to first call the meeting to order. It is, what is it, 905. And, ah, Michelle, okay. And in front of you, everyone can see the um, agenda for today. So we're going to be discussing all of these things as we go forward. At any time, if someone has a question during the meeting, please, you can you can raise your hand. I'm trying to keep an eye on the screen, um, on your photographs, but also um, there's, there's a, a, a button <laughs> with reaction. You can put post, uh, uh, raise your hand. And if you're on the telephone and we can't visually see you, please just speak up um, and, and then I will um, put you into the discussion as soon as is practicable. So nothing further to go on. I think we're going to have uh, the approval of our July 16th meeting minutes. And everyone has had a chance to read those. Those were sent out a while ago. So could I have a motion to approve those? I'll motion to approve. Oh, thank you, Beth. Motion made by Beth McGiven. Is there a second on that? I second. Michelle, second. Okay. And because we are on remote broadcast, I'm going to do a, oops, sorry. I'm going to do a roll call vote. So Pete McGinn? Yes. Thank you. Jim Hafey? Yes. Ed Colbert? Yes. Beth McGiven? Yes. Okay. Jillian Gonzalez? Yes. Okay. And Michelle Massa? Yes. And Josh Vidala? Yes. All right. Thank you. Okay. Oh, and Joe Scanlon? Okay. Joe's raised waving okay all right so that motion passes thank you very much and did anyone have questions on those meeting minutes at all i should have asked that first but okay very good now our next we'll move on to the next item of the agenda and uh let me just see this is this is when we give you some really good news and uh, exciting. This is the exciting part of the meet. Well, no, there's more excitement to come, but this is leading off to the excitement of the meeting. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Mike Burton to lead us off and describe the uh, Mike or Christina, whoever would like to do this, to describe the uh, design selection update and uh, uh, be able to tell you that. Uh, Today we have our designers with us at this meeting and you're gonna to get to meet them and they're gonna to get to meet you. So Michael, Christina, feel free to proceed. Sure. Thanks, go. Bob. So uh, just as you can see on the screen and uh, based off of some of the updates that we provided to the full SBC, as you know, uh, our first meeting with the MSBA DSP was on 721 and the first initial meeting included the proposal reviews. So uh, we received three proposals, as you know, one from Danesco, one from Miller Dyer Spears, and one from SLAM Collaborative. At the 721 MSBA DSP meeting, the MSBA voted to interview all three firms. At that time, um, MDS opted to not interview. And so our second meeting with the DSP occurred on 8-4. And so we conducted two interviews with the DSP on 8-4. Uh, with Denisco and SLAM Collaborative. Ultimately, Denisco received 18 votes in favor and SLAM uh, received two. 
So we then proceeded uh, with the authorization to move forward with the NISCO design as our uh, design designer for the Peabody uh, Welch Elementary School project. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it over to Denisco. We wanted Denisco, obviously, to join us for our meeting today, so that way we can provide you with an introduction and show you the presentation that they had uh, presented to the MSBA DSP uh, just a couple weeks ago. And uh, that way you can be familiar with how we were impressed with Denisco's presentation and ultimately why uh, not only did the MSBA feel that they were um, obviously the best choice for this project, but also how uh, the district and how uh, the three members from our group also felt strongly about Denisco design. So uh, Vivian, I know you had said that someone from your team was able to share the presentation, but I also do have it saved on my computer. So do you want me just to go ahead and pull it up or do you want to go ahead and share your screen? Um, if, if Brian could be given the control, uh, if he could have his screen shared, that'd be great. We're in the same room, socially distant. But didn't okay, so I just it. stopped sharing the screen. And so Rachel, can you provide Brian access for um, sharing his screen? Oh. It sure. would be it would be the one marked Denisco. Okay. Not the, the one marked Hunter, Denisco. Denisco. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and the only reason why we're asking to do this is because our the presentation has a little bit of an animation which doesn't translate when we use the PDF. Understand. Um, Christine, I think since you're in charge, I think you have to assign it to them. Okay. Uh, do so. Do. Click more. The more, I'm not seeing where that says that. Make host, here we go. All right, he should have now access to share screen. And for the benefit of everyone here on the Brady Bunch screen, um, we're gonna see this presentation. During that, you will learn who the Denisco members are. And then afterwards, we'll have them speak a bit more about who they are and what they're going to do. And I will go through the quote unquote room and introduce our committee members to the Denisco team. So go right ahead with this presentation. I think everyone is going to enjoy this very much. Um, those of us who went to the interview we're really privileged to watch this, and I think all of you are going to understand why Denisco was chosen for this project. So go right ahead. Great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Bev. It really is a pleasure and to be working with Peabody again. We're really excited. It's nice to see some familiar faces, and we look forward to getting to know some of the new members. Um, next, Brian. So just real briefly, some of you know who we are. Brian, can you advance the screen? Some technical difficulties. Vivian, there you go. Nope. He's working on it. It's, okay. Oh, there you go. How's that, Brian? No? Nope. Um, do you want me? I could make, you can make me the host. Do you want to do that, Brian? Okay, um, sorry, Christina, could you make me the host, please? Not working. Yeah, hold on one second. You would think that we would have this down pat by now, but there's always hey, no. something. Actually, let me, see. you know what? Let me get that one on the screen. Dealing with yeah. this virus changes hour to hour, Donna, so we're right on track with this, don't worry. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's our only problem, members, right? Though. <laughs> for all okay. of us, for the members of the committee, if you're not muted, let's let's mute just so that we don't um, interference with the with the uh, presentation. Also, okay. Oops. Hey, so, Brian. Hey, Brian. If it's not I'm working gonna... for you, if you um, you you need to now because you're the host, you need to switch the oh. host back to me or to Vivian. So you hit the three blue button 
dot next to the name and then you can make host for the person that you click on. If it's if it's easier um, and you want to advance the slides, that's fine. If the, the just is able to be time. so difficult. Yeah, maybe Christina should. Uh, sorry about this. Oh, let's see. It says that you're now the host, Vivian. So if you're okay. able to pull it up, great. If not, I can pull it up as a as a PDF. Okay. Let me see if let me see if this works. All right. Just can you see it? Yep. Okay. Hopefully I can advance. <laughs> and yeah, if you could just go to the first slide. Nope. Like you're in the middle of Sorry. it. Sorry, middle of it. Go back to the top. Okay, there you go. Let's give that a shot. Right. Okay, Vivian, go ahead and next slide, please. There we are. So again, um, Good morning, everyone. Uh, Vivian, next, please. Um, some of you know who we are. Uh, we've been working with the city for over 30 years, but we just want to talk a little bit about who we are and our relevant experience as it applies to the Welch School Project. Next, Vivian. Nope. Vivian, can nope. you advance the slide? Are you not seeing it? Nope. I'm only seeing no. it's, it's advancing on my. Oh, this is so strange. It's, it's advancing on my screen. Um, hmm. Okay, let me exit. Why don't you and, just go ahead? Yeah, why don't you just go ahead and, and make me the host and I'll just pull up the PDF. Thank you. Okay, yeah, sorry. We thought we could make this work a little bit better. I did hit the play button. I can't see where Christina is. Just on, on. I'm trying to find Christina on my screen. I'm Dawn oh. Whittier. Oh, there are two of you. So um, I'm going to scan and see if she sees me. OK. Everyone, I'm really sorry about this. It happens. This happens, don't worry. Okay. It'll be worth the wait. Yeah. We are making it. I mean, right. can you come here? Yeah, building the suspense. Oh, God. Do the not... play? I, no, I'm giving Christina the, I'm making Christina the host, but that doesn't seem to work either. Oh, um, it's okay. I think I got it here. You got and it? Just give me, oh. yep. All right, let me move this off the screen. Green. There you go. All right. okay. Can everyone see that? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. No worries. Yes, let's see if we can see the next slide. Yeah. Can you have <laughs> this? Pray for vaccine. <laughs> right? Yeah. We're only four or five months in. That would be better at this. I should be. All right. Can everyone see that? There we yeah. go. Yes. Okay. Right. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so again, you know, we, we're really excited to be here and we're just going to introduce ourselves so everyone knows who we are and we look forward to working with the city on this project. Um, next, if you don't mind. So for some of you um, might be familiar with Danisco, we have actually been working with the city for about 30 years and we've really learned so much over that time working with the mayor's office the school committee, school department, city officials, and departments. Next. Um, our team for the project, again, you'll some, some of you may recognize us. Vivian Lowe is going to be the principal in charge for the project. And she, too, has worked with the city as the OPM for the repairs of the Burke School and the actual re-roofing of the Welch School a few years ago. Um, in addition, Vivian was part of the design team for the recently completed Higgins Middle School. Jim Shuttleworth, who's not on the call this morning, he had another call, is also a principal with the firm, and he's going to serve in the role of the project manager for the project. Um, just for some context, Jim was actually the project manager for the recently completed Higgins School, 
and the uh, Meadows Golf Course Clubhouse. Ken is with us today. Um, Ken Danisco is the founder of our firm and he has been involved with the city for over 30 years. And we're excited to have Ken as part of the Welch Project. Jeff Oxalita, who is new to the city of Peabody, um, will be the Pride A project architect for the school project. Um, Jeff has actually completed several projects recently, including the renovations and additions to the Cabot Elementary School in Newton. My role is the educational programmer for the project, and I'll be working closely with Vivian as a liaison with MSBA, Peabody Public Schools, and the city. Next. To give everyone um, kind of some context, Danisco has completed 61 public schools in Massachusetts, of which 31 are elementary schools. And we have um, worked with the MSBA on 12 projects. We actually embrace the MSBA process. We believe it really has added value to the educational facilities throughout the Commonwealth. Um, what we'd like to point out is, although we have completed 61 schools, these are only in 24 communities. And we believe our commitment to service, excellence, and loyalty is demonstrated by our repeat clients, especially the city of Peabody. Next, please. So we're just gonna highlight quickly some of our relevant experience as it relates to the Welsh School Project as we understand it. Um, we have successfully completed many new schools and occupied sites. Um, given tight site constraints, many of our new schools are constructed within feet of the existing occupied building. And you can see how close that was the original stack um, to the old Higgins school. And you can see how close the new school actually was built right up against it. Um, next, please. In addition, um, we also have significant experience with renovations and additions on vacant sites. These projects obviously have an added layer of complexity. However, with careful coordination and attention to detail, we can create modern facilities for today's learning environments. Next. We also have experience with renovations and additions to occupied schools, both with uh, CMs or construction managers and general contractors. Phase construction in occupied buildings will affect many design and scheduling decisions. The safety and staff of students is paramount in any of these scenarios. Construction discussions start at the beginning of each project to ensure clear separation of the occupants and construction and are carefully thought out with as little impact to the educational experience during construction. Next, please. The Diamond Middle School in Lexington is a 160,000 square foot school and was completely occupied during construction. In order to maintain full operation during construction, we had both early site and enabling packages as well as, small, as a small addition as part of the first phase. The overall construction schedule included six phases, utilizing first and second shifts during uh, certain phases of the project and the construction lasted 30 months. Next, please. The Danvers High School project is uh, 250,000 square feet for 1,000 students. The students were housed in one wing um, with temporary access to the gym and we created a temporary cafeteria. But what's relevant to this project is we started to explore how to revitalize the 1960s building. We determined that an exterior precast panel system adhered to the exterior walls was not only aesthetically pleasing, but it also allowed us to improve the necessary thermal insulation while maintaining the classroom sizes. In addition, the prefabricated panels were erected quickly with minimal disruption to staff and students. Next, please. Every project has a story to tell and every client has their own sustainable goals. Next, for example, one of the goals for the town of Lexington is to be off fossil fuel and the city of Woburn's goals are to be extremely energy efficient, provide the infrastructure for solar panels and electric charging stations, as well as minimizing the impact to the site. When we look at the path to high performing buildings, we understand that the baseline building EUI is really unacceptable. We can all do much better. 
working with the MSBA and local communities, our minimum goal is to achieve a 25% reduction in energy use over code. This effectively brings us to an EUI of 32 or less. In addition, with an EUI of 28 or less, sets the project up as a net zero ready building for installation of solar arrays. Next. Recently, uh, recent examples of sustainable projects include the Cabot School in Newton. The Cabot successfully achieved Lee Gold with an EUI of 26.9. And this was a renovation addition project. We were able to take advantage of many site attributes as well as substantial reduction in energy and water. The Hastings School, which we just are completing with Dorn Whittier actually in Lexington is an all electric building with 80 geothermal wells. With an EUI of 28.8, .8, coupled with rooftop solar panels, parking lot solar canopies, and an on-site energy storage system provides a net zero facility. Also in Lexington is the Lexington Children's Place, which is also an all electric building utilizing a VRF system. Um, again, with on-site solar and energy storage, the facility actually generates more energy than what is required. Next. Lastly, um, it's been proven that a building's performance has a direct correlation to student performance. Lighting impacts attitudes and thermal comfort impacts focus and, attend and attendance. So we really look forward to discussing the city's sustainable objectives for the Welch School project. Next. So Danisco has been involved with educational facilities since the inception of our firm. Much has changed over the years, but our approach remains the same. Next. Our educational pro programming approach is process oriented and visionary. I will remain with the project from inception through completion, including FF and E selection, which plays, which plays an important part of programming and flexibility. Next. UDL is a way of teaching and learning that gives all students equal opportunity to learn. It's important to create flexible means, methods, and materials to realize each student's potential. Next. For example, project-based learning and maker spaces can be created in various shapes and sizes, including gallery areas and corridors and areas with the media centers. Next. Other learning opportunities can exist from benches and quarters to project areas shared by a few classrooms to movable partitions to create smaller or larger spaces accordingly. Next. Other flexible spaces include project areas and breakout rooms that are determined both by program and design. Next. As we've all been thrust into thinking about social distancing as of late, flexibility has taken on a whole new meaning. Minimal built-ins and flexible furniture and equipment provide opportunities for social distancing. Next, please. Other considerations that have become at the forefront of many discussions includes various changes to the building infrastructure, such as bipolar ionization, touchless equipment, and remote learning considerations. Thank you. Um, this, I think, actually, we're going to turn this over to Jeff. Um, so building systems and controls. Uh, we know that a goal of the project is replacement of the original 1972 heating and ventilation system. And as part of the study, we'll help the city to evaluate the different options and appropriate level of controls. Uh, this is a sample analysis of five different types of HVAC systems, left to right unit ventilators, fan coil units, uh, VRF system, displacement ventilation, and then an induction system. Um, you can see some of our evaluation criteria in the leftmost column, uh, first cost, operating cost, maintenance. Um, and we'll help the city to evaluate um, all of these systems in depth. Also under consideration uh, for the project is the heating and cooling plant. The building is currently all electric and we are aware of the city's desire to potentially convert some of the systems to natural gas and we'll evaluate the feasibility of that based on location of gas service, local gas pressures, uh, et cetera, um, to make the most appropriate system decision. Uh, next, please. Uh, for reference, the Higgins is a four pipe induction system and heat's moved around the building through hot water and chilled water. 
the boilers and uh, domestic hot water heaters are natural gas fired and then chilled water is produced using an electric air cooled chiller. Um, and as part of the Wilch School project, uh, we'll help evaluate all options for the HV system, HVAC system replacement, evaluate natural gas as a fuel source, and then also determine with the city what needs to be on emergency power and, and what the fuel source for a generator could be, whether it be natural gas, diesel, or other uh, next Um, as part of the interview process, we performed an initial site analysis, which I'll review, and a more in-depth review of the site is currently ongoing with the rest of the design team, and then Vivian will share some of our thoughts on site design, um, and both um, with the site and on board the building. All right, so this is an aerial view of the current project site. Uh, the Welch School is on a 19.4 acre site uh, shared with O'Connor Park. Mars Park is located to the southeast, and then the Peabody Meadow Golf Course to the west. Uh, vehicular uh, access to the site is limited to the vehicular bridge off of Swampscott Avenue, uh, seen in the, the northwest corner there, um, and that's over Strong Water Brook. And this sets up a really beautiful approach to the school and, and helps to give the school a sense of identity. Um, there are several pedestrian connections uh, to the surrounding neighborhood, one of which is the pedestrian bridge on Hancock Street up the hill to, to Putnam Street, and then uh, through the path uh, through the park um, down to Mars Park and Home Street. The long axis of the school runs north to south, and the classrooms are oriented east to west. Uh, next, please. One of the most prominent ecological and geological features of the site is the Strongwater Brook and the adjacent wetlands. Uh, the brook runs from the southernmost point of the site, kind of down, down from behind the softball field backstop, up along the golf course uh, to the bridge at Swampscott Ave, and then the brook flows east, uh, eventually meeting up with the North River uh, in the PV Square area. Uh, next, please. And this shows um, the buffer zones surrounding basically the strong, the strong water brook and the wetlands area. There's a 100 foot uh, buffer zone around the wetlands and a 200 foot buffer zone around the strong water brook. Next. A significant portion of the site is within the 500 year flood plain, which means that the area indicated in orange has a 0.2% chance of flooding per year. Uh, and while the site itself might not flood very often, we could take advantage of this opportunity to help control the flow of water downstream um, and be a good neighbor to the surrounding neighborhood and PV Square area. Next. The green area shown here represents open space consisting of the two parks and the, uh, the meadow golf course. Uh, this is a key resource for the school and neighborhood, um, both physically and visually. Um, and a big advantage to having this amount of open space is it creates a unique identity for the school. However, one disadvantage you can see here is it reduces the physical area we have for the project uh, significantly. Next. Okay, so as Jeff had said, um, as we look at the site and we will be continuing to look at it more carefully now that our consultants are on board, we're hitting the ground running. Um, but as part of our prep for the interview, we did look at, as Jeff said, how to um, be able to store additional stormwater on site so that we could mitigate the uh, issues downtown. Um, some of these might be also uh, looking at reducing impermeable paving. We know there's a horse paved parking lot currently. We will look at also um, as we study the building and what can be done for addition renovations. We'll look at minimizing building footprint um, and basically taking a hard look at the site to, to see what the limits are, but looking at it also as opportunities. Next, please. 
A key component of the project will be to ensure clear separation of construction activity and school operations. Um, given the single access point to the school, it is going to be very tight. So we're gonna look at other ways to get the contractor in to separate them from the uh, school, the student and teacher access. We're gonna look at how we can separate the entrance as well as the exit of uh, construction vehicles and deliveries. We'll also look at how we can provide a whole separate corner of the site for construction laydown um, and workspace that's contiguous with the access points. Um, but again, safely separated from students and staff. This laydown area will be limited by the proximity to the wetlands and the stream, and as well as the erosion control measures that we'll need to take. More importantly, we'll look at how to phase the work effectively to safely separate the work areas from student and staff. Um, we will, as part of the whole MSBA process, look at all the different options that we typically would for a school. We'll look at the repairs, renovations and addition, as well as new construction as part of the whole vetting process. Um, we understand that an addition renovation is probably the way to go, but again, we're going to vet all of the options. These options that we looked at um, are because it's the most challenging to renovate and add to an existing building that is potentially occupied, we looked at how we might do that. Next, please. Um, if there is no additional swing space available, we would anticipate the need to provide something on site. We would anticipate that the project will require significant interior renovations that will impact all the spaces. So on this slide, you can see right next to the field, we have a series of four classrooms that would be um, portable classrooms. This would provide the ability to work, complete the work in a phased manner by relocating quadrants, um, a grouping of classrooms at a time. Next, please. If it is determined, again, as we, um, as we're looking at existing physical condi conditions, we're going to be looking at programming also for the school. And if it is determined that the existing core space is deficient and given the limits of the site, we would study building expansion opportunities within the existing footprint. So subject to a structural analysis to understand the existing capacity of the building structural components, we may be able to construct an addition over the first floor that is centrally located. This would allow us to take advantage of some of the existing open lobby space below. Next, please. We will also look at the potential to increase the size of the addition within the footprint to provide new classrooms over one quadrant of the building. This would provide an opportunity to open up space on the first floor for flexibility and project-based learning. Next, please. This addition may potentially expand to encompass a full bar of new space over the single story classroom wings and could add up to eight classrooms. Next, please. An alternative to the portable classrooms on site would be for a second floor addition using modular construction that could provide four new classrooms or flexible space and can be used as swing space. Um, for flexible program use. In this case, you could see that we are building, we could build outside of the building footprint. Um, and this would actually provide some protected space down on the playground level. Um, also could be used for outdoor classrooms. Um, and then on the second floor, it would provide an at grade connection to the outdoors. So just another way of looking at it. Next, please. As we look at the building components where there are a number of issues, there are also opportunities. The east-west solar orientation of the existing classrooms lead to unintended consequences. Direct sunlight causes glare, is disruptive, and is a distraction for classroom function and also requires window shades for control. When the treatment of windows is addressed properly, a better learning environment can be provided. Next, please. For the McCarthy and Burke schools, the original window design for classrooms was replicated as in option one on the screen. For the Welch school, we have the opportunity to reimagine the window wall, 
playful components can be designed to add space to the existing classrooms and also serve to reduce the amount of glass area and also serve to control solar glare. Next, please. Here in the uh, lower right-hand corner, you can see what it could look like on the inside. Um, there is opportunity to expand the classrooms by pulling that wall, that window wall outward as well. Two extra feet really can be used in many ways, such as storage, flexible teaching space, or group organization. Next, please. All right, so here we are. We are so excited to be working on this project. I personally am so excited to be back in Peabody. We um, are hitting the ground running. We put together a high level list of all the items that we are gonna be working on. We are in fact meeting with our consultants this afternoon to go through the Welch Elementary School to examine the existing conditions. So on the slide, we note that um, there are several tasks involved with the existing conditions um, study. We will be conducting a whole site survey, um, on, on grade survey, and we'll also look at the wetlands in detail. We would likely be filing an ANRAD sooner than later to just verify the wetland flags. We will be on site taking some soil samples uh, with borings and test pits. And we'll also be doing a uh, building material survey for um, hazmat as well as uh, to look at structural um, capacity. We will also be there to field measure. We do have a set of drawings, um, the original blueprints. So what we do want to do though, is just to confirm that the, the plans are close to what's drawn. We ourselves will be drawing up those uh, plans and verifying that the existing conditions are reflected on the drawings so that we're planning accurately. Next please. Oh, educational program. Sorry, Donna. <laughs> uh, so uh, as we said, the educational programming will follow concurrently with our building uh, existing condition survey. Um, we will be planning a series of meetings to understand how the existing building is used, what the um, district's plans are, and um, at the end of this process, we'll have an educational program that will help define what our space needs really are for the Welch Elementary School. That is um, really necessary to understand how and what needs to be done to the physical spaces at the Welch Elementary School to meet the, um, the educational needs. Next, please. Um, so there are some considerations as we head into the feasibility study. Um, as we, as I had mentioned earlier, we are going to be looking at all the scenarios that we typically would for an MSBA project. We're looking at repairs, renovations, ad reno, new construction. We'll also um, look at the on-site swing space, but we would want to confirm whether there is availability for swing space elsewhere within the district, um, within the city. Uh, I know that the Kylie School is potentially being considered. Um, we would definitely need to study whether, uh, what needs to be done to the school and whether it could physically accommodate students as well. We also, um, our understanding is that there are no alternate sites being considered at this point, and we would like to confirm that with you. But at this point, we are um, we understand that we are really just studying the Welch Elementary School site on uh, Swampscott Avenue. Um, so again, as we move into looking at options, there are many building considerations that we will be studying. We know that there are going to be accessibility issues that we need to address. There are life safety systems that need to be updated. Um, the windows, um, boy, when I was working on this eight years ago, I think we talked about replacing the windows then, but there were considerations with the HVAC system. So um, that kind of goes hand in hand with our assessment. Um, and then again, as Jeff had mentioned, we'll be looking at is, is natural gas the fuel source for this building? Do we keep it all electric? Um, there are sustainability considerations as well. So we'll bring all of those to the table to discuss with you. Um, and finally, we'll be looking at electrical and um, technology and looking at how 
the systems need to be upgraded to meet uh, today's needs, um, tomorrow's needs, and 25, 50 years down the line. Next, I think that is it. And I'd like to turn it back over to you, Christina and Mike. Yes, thank you. So I think we could take a moment here. Does anyone have any questions in regards to the presentation that Dennis Go uh, presented? And, and um, ultimately, you can see why uh, Dennis Go was chosen by the DSP as well as the three member DSP group from RS. SBC, so can open it up for discussion right now if anyone has any questions or anything they'd like to do, address based off of what they saw today. And to the members, if you click on the participant link, uh, you'll see on that screen, there is a button to raise your hand if you'd like to use that, or if you'd like to just raise your hand if you're on screen, we can see that as well. Joe Scanlon. Thank you for the uh, presentation. It's very exciting to see, you know, the different concepts. Um, if you could do me a favor and cycle back through the conversation about natural gas and uh, not electricity. I'm relatively new to Peabody, but we have such a strong municipal lighting department and with the expansion of, you know, solar um, I didn't really hear it mentioned much at all during the presentation. So if you could cycle back through those two, that one, two topics. Thank you. Okay. And while you're going back through those, just as a matter of historic uh, notation, when this project was originally discussed and uh, originally submitted, uh, at that time, natural gas was uh, chosen because of the economical factor of natural gas. However, knowing the difficulties with that site and in the neighborhood with the um, natural gas uh, lines in that neighborhood, uh, over time, from the time that this was originally submitted to MSBA, People on, on the committee have talked about relying much more on the you know, electrical uh, component for this building. So it, it really is in play. And um, I know that that's a factor for Denisco and for Doran Whittier to look at. But um, over time, our focus actually had changed. But this was originally... Um, I think we're going back four or five years when when we first started presenting. So that's just so that everybody knows where we are, especially for you, Joe, because I do know you're right. You are you are new to this, but um, it, and I know that um, Denisco and Dorn Whittier are both really well aware of looking at that entire issue on this project. So I'm going to turn that back over to um, Denisco and Dorn Whittier for clarification. So I, I could just say a few words on it, Donna, please just um, feel free to kick in. So as, as Donna was reviewing sustainability, we have many clients, many municipalities who are actually looking to convert back to electrical just because it's a non-fossil fuel. It's really a sustainable measure that is a commitment by the not only the district, but the municipality. So um, again, this relies on uh, PMLP is, is, you're right, such a great resource. And um, there's opportunity on the school sites to add even more electrical um, generation with uh, rooftop solar panels, with um, parking lot uh, canopies, uh, to the point where we can get the building close to net zero. Um, so again, it's just the start of the conversation, which is why we brought this up. It's like, well, yes, we can go with natural gas, which is fairly inexpensive um, on the short term. But if you're looking at long term and looking at the future um, capabilities of the school and just uh, operations and the cost of operations, a lot of 
folks are looking at going back to electrical. Um, Donna, do you wanna add to that? I, I guess the, um, what's important, so you're a step ahead of everyone. So, so there you are, um, right? We, we already know what the school's capable of all electrically, but I think what's important is just to make sure that the equipment, the mechanical equipment um, is supported for all of the spaces when you do all electric. And so we, like we said in Lexington, um, actually with Doran Whittier on one project, we had 80 geothermal wells for a school of um, 110,000 square feet. So we were able to take advantage of that type of um, power coming in and actually just using a standard like induction system. Um, at the LCP in Lexington, we used all electric, but we didn't have the ability to use geothermals, but the facility itself is small enough and these spaces are small enough. They don't have an auditorium or a gym or a cafeteria that we were able to use a VRF system. So what it will be really important to start that conversation now to better understand the goals and working with the facilities department on how we're going to be able to effectively provide the mechanical systems and what the options are with all electric. But we agree, you're, you're already there, right? So, um, and, and the other consideration as you've been dealing with on the site is what do we do for emergency power? Um, and, and that's just in a part of the conversation. If I could, just a follow-up question on that. Thank you. It's a great explanation. And, and thank you for not mentioning oil heat. Uh, I know that your uh, point on the facilities and the equipment, going back to oil heat, I know old school uh, burners could have, I'm sorry, boilers could have dual burners for oil heat and for natural gas. I assume that it's a fork in the road that if we talk about electricity, we go this way. And if we talk about natural gas, we go this way. That's my assumption. Are, is there equipment such as heating equipment, boilers that could be serviced by either natural gas or electricity, the same exact boiler? I, I'm, we're not aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. And may, maybe by nature, the mm -hmm. fact that we typically really for the past many years have been installing um, high efficiency gas fired boilers. So, uh, and we see less and less oil. We don't ever see oil being installed. Um, so no, but we can definitely get you some information as part of our assessment. And um, as we present the options, we'll put those out there as well. If there are. Yeah, those are questions for my education. Thank you. I'm all set. Joe, um, it would be helpful. What, what is your background and role? Um, it's facilities and operations. Yeah. You know, don't know how to fix a boiler, but I know how to stand behind somebody and yell at them. <laughs> great. No, it's helpful. Uh, that's great. <laughs> actually, I will be honest, Donna, you just brought up something that made me realize this actually might be a good point for us to introduce ourselves to you so that you can understand people's uh, with their background, why they're coming up with those questions. Joe is also our uh, business manager for the school department. So he's, he's always going to be looking at the bottom line and the, and, the, and the dollars on the energy expenses in preparation of spending the money and of paying, paying the bills and forming a budget. So if we could at this time, um, I would like to go around the screen and uh, we'll have people introduce themselves to all of you. Um, let's see, Christina, can, can you put up um, the full screen? Can you see that? Um, Does it show the participants or no? They actually, you know what? That would be fine. I'll, I'll go right down the line on this one. And folks, I'll introduce you and then speak up and give some of your background. Okay. Right now, we've got Ed Colbert, number one. Go ahead, Ed. Tell us a bit about yourself so that Danisco will know who you are and what you're here for. Ed, Danisco knows who I am very well. We've worked together. Hi, Donna. We've worked together on projects years and years past with her dad, 
uh, not involving Peabody, other schools in the Commonwealth. So uh, I'm a retired electrician, been in the trade for 50 years, and I'm a resident of Peabody for 41 years, and I'm happy to be on another school building committee uh, project. Thank you. Nice to see you, Ed. And I'm glad you brought all of that up, Ed. That's how I'd like everybody to do this, because um, not only are you introducing yourself to Danisco, you're explaining things to any members of the public who may be watching this meeting as well. So, Joe Scanlon, we'll go back to you. If you'd like, you can give your title and a description of who you are and why you're asking those questions. Sure. Thank, thank you. Um, I've been in the school business for about 20 years. And prior to that, never a conversation goes by without mentioning I had a 20 year career at Toys R Us as a facilities operations person, which I was here when we closed the school, the store in Peabody. I wasn't here when it opened. So um, I'm, as Ed, it probably has familiar, probably have uh, memories of some guy in a suit standing around annoying you. That's the type of uh, roles that I've served in my career. <laughs> oh, thanks, Joe. Okay, Beth McGiven. Hi. Um, I'm a retired Welch School teacher. I was there for 23 years, approximately. Um, I also grew up in the Welch School neighborhood, so it's been a part of my life for a very long time. Um, so if I didn't live in the neighborhood, I was teaching in the neighborhood. So I've been following um, the needs of the Welch. Uh, school school and community for a long time and been involved for a long time and um, it's that's why I'm still involved and a fun fact Beth never brings this up the reason there are two clear Lexian panels in the windows in the classroom at Welch is because Beth got the throwaways from the Burke School project and she hand fashioned the screens and got the hardware to try to fix the cranks on the windows in each of those classrooms. And she did all of that while she was teaching at the school. So uh, she has a only, history. Yeah. I was only a part-time, I was a, a tutor there when I did that, but uh, yes. Um, that, was, that was when she- I was very motivated. I, I think um, having worked there for many years and um, I, seeing the needs, living with the needs of the, of, of the well-schooled students and staff, I just, um, it was very motivating to try to seek out improvements. I love the way you said motivating. I would have been saying you were so totally frustrated. You went at it with a wrench and your screwdriver and fixed it. That and also, she, that also, very, yeah. <laughs> frustrated and motivated. Yes. But and I'm she, very, and I'm very um, pleased um, mm -hmm. as to what's happening. Um, I, the, the choices between um, the project manager and now the um, design architect, I'm very pleased because they were, when we went through and uh, looking at what was presented by all, all firms, um, it, what we as a small group, um, what we chose is what's, or what we wanted to happen is happening. That's right. So. Yeah, thanks, Beth. We, we look forward to really getting into the needs of the students and the impacts that will hopefully improve their educational experience. So thank you for your time on this. And thank Beth, you. how many years were you at Welch? How many years did you teach? Well, you, including- I taught as a full-time uh, teacher for 22 years mm -hmm. okay. and um, as a tutor for like three years after that. Yeah. So yeah. long history. Long history. Thank you. Jim Hafey, going to introduce you. I'm done. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Jim Hafey. I'm the facilities director in town. And I'm probably going to be the guy standing in front of Joe Scanlon getting yelled at. So <laughs> that seems to be the likely scenario here. Um, I'm looking forward to the project. I think it's going to be a, a, a good. Uh, a good addition to the school system here. Um, look, and uh, to answer your uh, one of your questions, Joe, anyways, uh, electric uh, heating systems don't have boilers. So it's just coils in the room. So it would be a little bit different from that. Um, and Donna, for you, I have uh, 
your HVAC drawings and I'll, the original ones. So I'll give them to you uh, when I see you in a couple hours, I guess. Two hours. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Okay, I have uh, Chris Lord. Dr. Lord. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Lord. I'm uh, currently the assistant superintendent here in Peabody. Uh, I've been involved with high schools for the last 30 years or so in small cities. Principal of four different high schools, and um, most recent of which was the Peabody High School this past year. And our team put together a pretty detailed statement of interest for a new high school in Peabody, which we hope is successful. I'm fortunate enough to continue working in this wonderful community. I'd love to be part of a new high school construction. Um, and that's why I'm here to learn a little bit about the process of how schools are made. And that's why I'm here. And anything else I can do to help, just ask. I take orders well. <laughs> Chris is a wonderful member of our team and our administration. And we wanted him on this committee because he adds so much to every committee he serves on. So he wasn't going to get away with not being on this one. We would let that happen. Okay. Next, I have Dan Doucette. Now, I know you know Dan, but I'm going to have Dan speak a little bit about himself. Go ahead, Dan. Well, um, every one of the buildings that Danisco cited as being in their inventory in Peabody, I was in some way involved with. Uh, each of those presents a learning opportunity and, a, and, and takeaways that really add value to the, to the buildings and projects we've worked on later on in the, in the process. Uh, this is gonna be an interesting one of the ones we've done. Uh, as a background, this started as a, a ad, as a, a um, accelerated repair program, which uh, by its scope was kind of morphed uh, into a um, accelerated repair on steroids uh, and is now in the core program, which has its benefits and its, uh, and its other uh, issues. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I've, I've learned a lot in 37 years. Uh, this is probably going to be my last building that I work on uh, for the city before I, I, I move on and somebody else does what I do. Um, but it's, it's good to be working with the team. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to later today because I've already had some notes that I want to bring to the, um, to the key players on the design team. Um, and, you know, I think we've got a good team working together already between Doran Whittier and, and, our, and our designers now. So uh, we want to move forward quickly, efficiently, uh, compassionately with the, with the school and its neighbors um, and, and achieve the results that we did uh, with a new school at the Higgins, which was started out as an Ann Reno project. So uh, let's, let's forge ahead, uh, deal with all the side issues that have come up with how MSBA continues to change uh, with the opportunities presented in the COVID uh, situation. And um, let's just say I'm in the big picture department. And I, I, I was a little remiss in our um, introduction that we really have valued our relationship with you. You really are kind of the um, grounded person who, who has so much history and we look forward to looking at um, lessons learned or best practices and takeaways from um, our previous experience and how we can really add value to this project. So it's nice to see that you're still there, at least for this project. You look great, by the way. He is great. He's my right-hand man, and he keeps saying that this will probably be his last building project. Don't believe him. <laughs> Okay, next on the list, I have Jared Hockman. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm uh, on the school committee. I've been there. I'm in my 11th year, I think, uh, all those years with Beverly uh, on the school committee. Uh, I'm excited for this project. I'm excited to see the team that's in place. Uh, we've been advocating for um, not only improvements to the Welch School, but significant improvements to the Welch School ever since I've been on the school committee. So I'm excited to see uh, this project coming together. Uh, I agree with Bev, uh, Dan, 
Uh, don't don't sell yourself short. We may have a few more projects before you leave. And unlike uh, Jim or Joe, I don't plan on yelling at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Next on the list is Jillian Gonzalez. Hi, everyone. Um, I guess my official title here is um, parent of a Welch School student. Um, I'm not sure if my youngest will still be at the school by the time this project is complete, um, but I'm still excited to be part of it. Um, I live um, close by to the school, so close that I could I could see my land on the on some of the slides where you had the, the school plans mapped out. Um, so while my daughter may not be at the school. Um, like I said, when this is completed, I'm, I'm still really interested um, in what's going on, just you know, strictly as a member of the, the nearby community. Um, and I'm excited to, to see this happen. Jillian, don't give up hope. It will be completed in your lifetime. Um, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, you know, with my kids, you know, the one we started with on this project is now 30 years old and, and <laughs> the youngest one is, is 23. So it will happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've got, I've got full faith in, in this team. I'm really excited with what I, I saw today. So I'm excited to, to see this happen. And, and you do fulfill two roles as a parent and also as a neighbor, it really is very important for your perspective. So. Absolutely. We'll keep you there even when your kids graduate from grad school. Don't worry. We'll still have you on there. We'll be <laughs> I'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I have Michelle Massa. Hi, everybody. I am the principal at the Welch School and really excited for this project to um, take shape. This is, you know, my fourth year uh, in this role at the Welch School, and we've been working diligently towards it every year. Uh, so we're in a great shape place, even with uh, pandemic issues and things like that. And I look forward to seeing everybody in a couple hours. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Next, Dr. Josh Vidala. Hey everyone, uh, Josh Vidala. I'm a superintendent of schools, effective July 1st. So I, I'm new to the school district. Uh, I lived in the community for 10 years, though. Um, previously, I was the assistant superintendent in the Revere Public Schools, uh, so we built five schools over a 10-year period, uh, so I have some experience, uh, and I had the fortunate uh, opportunity to attend uh, the MSBA's design summit with a number of architects uh, for a new high school for Revere High School, um, so that was a great experience last May, uh, May 2019. Uh, it was a three-day summit at... Um, Brandeis University, and they brought in some Northeastern architects and some architects from, from throughout the world. Um, they have worked all over the place. So it was, it was a really great experience. And so I'm looking forward to this project and hopefully uh, a couple more to come in PPD in the next coming years. <laughs> very, very good statement, Dr. Vidala. Uh, next, we have Pete McGinn. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Pete McGinn, I am on the PPD City Council. I represent Ward 2. Uh, well, school is in Ward 2, and uh, this is the school has been long overdue for this type of attention. So, I'm very excited to continue my involvement uh, with this committee and working uh, with the Donesco team. And it's great to have you on this. And I want people to know that Pete really looks at the numbers. He, he checks the numbers on things and he asks questions about sustainability and um, really asks a lot of great questions. So it's been a lot of fun to have you on this committee, Pete, really. Thanks, And next I have Ryan Melville. Hi, um, my name is Ryan Melville, I'm a city councilor. I'm also a director of Butter uh, of the school. So I know the area very, very well. I know the grounds very, very well. Um, and I look forward to seeing the school get upgraded. It's a, it's a really wonderful area and it's a great neighborhood. So I appreciate this and I think this is a good team. So I look forward to seeing the results. Thanks. And Ryan, you're also a Welch School alum. I am, yes, Wildcats. Here we go. 
<laughs> oh, now I don't know if I've missed anyone on our side. I think I caught everybody according to the participant list. And I feel bad because this is a type of thing we would have all been in a room together. We could have shook hands or, you know, just really sat down and, and chatted. And I thank you all for going through this and, and for speaking up. Um, just by way of, of a little bit of background on our designer selection committee, we had Beth McGivern and Pete McGinn, Joe Scanlon, Dan Doucette, and myself. And that was a great process because uh, Beth brought up something that I agree with, and I think the other members will too, that uh, many of the, the qualities and qualifications that we were looking for when we began our um, search were points that the MSBA picked up on through the um, presentation and interview process as well. So that that is how uh, Danisco rose to the top in the selection process. Then at that point, uh, Dr. Joshua Dalla, Maya Betancourt and I had to appear before the MSBA twice where we participated in votes. And that, again, it was a really interesting process. I know some of you were able to watch it remotely. And at that time, again, it was nice to see how the MSBA picked up on many of the very same qualities that we had, we had stressed in our selection. And it reinforced to me and I think to everyone else, our recommendation was a very good solid one. And they backed that up with their vote. And they did that twice, first with our Doran Whittier selection and now with the Danisco design selection. So um, really all of the considerations that people have brought forward and that the group has worked on are embedded in the project going forward. Beth, um, I just wanna say we really appreciate um, Peabody's uh, validation of our of our efforts. We have really enjoyed working with the city. We really um, look forward to this challenging project. It's going to be a complicated project. It might not be a large project, but that doesn't matter to us. What's what's important is to finding the right solution for the students. So you know, we we really do appreciate your. Um, vote of confidence for us to to do the job and we're real like we're starting we've already started right so we're we're two feet in already um and again whatever the solution is it just needs to be the right solution for the city and for the students so um it, it's it's going to be a fun challenge it, it it is donna and that's the thing even aside from the fact that you have worked on projects in Peabody in the past and that we have worked with you, your presentation was outstanding. You would have been chosen no matter what. Having the previous relationships just makes it even better because you are able to hit the ground running. You really are hitting the ground running just so everyone knows they are. <laughs> I think it was within like a day, you had already started asking for blueprints and, and pulling this project together because of your familiarity with how Peabody is set up and who to contact. And um, honestly, so everyone understands, this is an added bonus to have that already standing relationship. So this is really going to be a great project and it is gonna be a lot of fun. We really will enjoy working on this with you. Okay. Um, what I think we'll do now is go into the next topic on our agenda, the schedule update. And Christina and Mike, I'll let you take that. I know you have a, you have a nice um, presentation on that. That calendar. Yep. So Yep, so uh, just kind of going over some of the next steps that I know Denisco had in their presentation and just wanted to highlight some of our upcoming uh, meetings and, and dates with you. So 
Uh, we do have uh, a contract for Denisco that is in review with the owner at this time. Uh, Dan did provide us with a couple of small additional changes that we need to make. Um, Donna will forward that over to you this morning and so that we can make those changes and get that into the mayor's hands for execution. And then as you heard, we are uh, going to be meeting on site today with Denisco's uh, consultants as far as doing some uh, existing conditions review. And so uh, that will start at 1230 today at the Welch School. Uh, we are planning on having hazmat sampling with uh, Denisco's uh, consultant ECMS starting on 820. And that should take about five days, uh, concluding on 825. Uh, I was working with Vivian on that yesterday. And so we just need to confirm those dates once she does speak with ECMS. And obviously, Michelle will confirm those dates with you as well. So you're aware of what's going to be going on in the school at that time. And then as you also saw on their next steps, there's uh, some boring test bits and soils that we will need to do some testings on and collect some samples on. We also provide those dates for you once we have a better, clearer understanding of when that can occur. And then the last step uh, that we wanted to identify is ed programming. As you know, we already have uh, we've already you know formed a subcommittee that consists of uh, let me pull the group up: Michelle Massa, Deborah Hewitt, and uh, Jared Hawkman that wanted to be part of our ed pro programming subcommittee. And so we want to make sure we do have an opportunity, as you all know, that school. Uh, will not be starting for the students until September 16th is supposed to be the first day. And so teachers will be in the building full time starting 831. So we actually have a really great opportunity between that time frame. Uh, if we could, Michelle, talk with you maybe today on how we could form uh, a group with the program, the, uh, the subcommittee, as well as maybe some members of your staff and, and with you as well, and maybe some administration members so that we can um, start that discussion now and then uh, really you know, hit some of the points that I know Denisco wants to uh, discuss. So that way, before students either come into the building or really start the process either for the hybrid model or schooling from home, that we can um, meet on some of those times with you that you know, present um, open windows for us during that time frame. And uh, we can discuss some more of those times with you today, Michelle, when, we, um, when we're on site with you. So those are kind of some of the high level next steps that we've identified. And so uh, this slide you've all seen, this is kind of our high level designer selection timeline, as well as uh, what we've inputted for feasibility and schematic design, PSR and city approvals. Uh, next steps would be that we've requested a work plan from the NISCO design that outlines upcoming meetings and um, committees that we'll want to form and interloop within our other SBC dates. So for now, uh, we still have our next meeting scheduled for uh, September 11th or 12th, mm -hmm. September 10th at 9 a.m. And so if we need to schedule anything else in between there, we'll definitely reach out to the appropriate parties and different subcommittees to see if we can make uh, a meeting work. But for now, we'll still, um, have our meeting scheduled once a month. And if we need to change our schedule to maybe a bi-weekly schedule, we'll obviously uh, discuss that with you at our next SBC meeting. And also to all members, um, you did see the slide with the working groups. I would say if you'd like to jump on to an additional working group, submit that request immediately. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on those groups, but this is the time now that you've seen things in, in, you know, some drawings and heard about uh, what we're going to be doing moving forward that may have piqued your interest in some of the specific areas of this project. And so if you, if you, you want to add to your um, involvement, please feel free to do so, but do it quickly so that we can start scheduling the meetings that are needed. Um, Bev, I, I, I just I, wanted to uh, jump in. Could could I be added to the um, technology group as well? It's Jillian Gonzalez. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I was on the educational programming group. Um, I think we sort of formed this when Josh was originally transitioning. So I would make a recommendation that he definitely wants to be on that group. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I know that there will be a change. Um, Deb Hewitt, is uh, has transferred to a different school. So um, Michelle, I, I do need to speak with you after the meeting about um, suggesti suggesting a replacement for Deb. Um, so 
whoever that is may want to be on that group as well. And of course, there are other members of your staff. We want to open that up to everyone that would have, um, you know, involvement in, in education programming. Can, I, can you add me to a bunch of the groups? Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought I put myself in, in a whole bunch, but I only landed on one. <laughs> if yeah, I can... Sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to be part of the technology group, the interior design, the facilities, the health group. I mean, I, I think obviously I need to be an active participant in a lot yes. of these. I don't want to do anything with the money because I'm going to make utopia. So, <laughs> <laughs> actually, we'll make sure we add you to all the groups, Michelle, besides, yeah. besides it, the it, financial and bonding. <laughs> thank you. And I'll be going to all of them, including the money group. So, <laughs> we'll have a lot of fun with this. It, it really is fascinating. Every piece of this is amazing. Uh, is there anyone Bev, to jump in, yeah, Pete? Yeah, thank you, Bev. Uh, could you add me to the facilities assessment, NEP? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'd you. be good on that one. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my list of who isn't here. You know, if you don't come to a meeting, you always get put on a subcommittee. So we're going to go through that list, too. Just fair warning. <laughs> Everybody here knows how I am, so... They're prepared for that. That's why they showed up. Uh, just from the, the big picture department, this is organized very closely to the way we did the Higgins. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I think the management of all these subcommittees as we get input into the larger building program will be exactly how um, we did it with the Higgins program. Uh, what we also learned is that in the long process that the MSBA sets forth for leading up to the final building choice, uh, things can change. Uh, health and safety will change. Uh, some of our educational programming may change. Uh, but the, the building blocks are there within these committees to get, to get real good input, uh, to work as a team, and to build the final program the way that we want it and the way that is constrained by dollars, by the site, by the physical plant, and, and those sort of things. But that was a takeaway that uh, Denisco should be well familiar with, and Doran Whittier, sort of as they started working with us, learned that we were already queued up to do these things very well. And, and Bev, Bev will manage that process, I think, extremely uh, efficiently. So thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Things really do change. I mean, Doran Whittier, Denisco, did you ever think you'd have to design desks with plexiglass in front of it? I mean, in, in life, did you ever think that would happen? Okay. Are there any other topics that anyone wanted to bring forward at this time? I'm just going to... Uh, all right. Okay. And then um, it, I've looked at the participant list. I don't see anyone from the public calling in. I will make a last call if anybody, um, anybody viewing this meeting would like to speak. Wait a second. All right. Seeing none, we're going to proceed on. Um, so the next meeting will be September 10th at 9 a.m. And uh, between now and then, we will find out whether we will continue on Zoom or whether we will be able to have a meeting in person. You never know. Wait an hour and <laughs> it could be. But we'll, we will let you know. And just so everyone knows, the consideration when we did begin this whole project and we did start meetings, we were avoiding the traffic at the Welch School which is why we went to 10 o'clock meetings. With no traffic on the internet, we moved back to nine. So we take <laughs> those things into consideration as well. All right, is there anything else? Anybody, one last chance. All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right, thank you, Joe. And a second. I second that. Okay, thank you, Beth. All right, everybody, thank you very much. This was a great meeting. Um, 
nice to have everyone now on board and have you all kind of sort of have met. And uh, it is very nice to see you all at Danisco Design and uh, to be able to work with you again. So uh, gonna let you go. Hi, Ken. Do you miss me yet? <laughs> I miss you. I really do. I really do. All right. We're going to let you go because I know you folks have to be on site with your um, with your people. Um, and we appreciate the quick action that you're taking on this. And uh, we will see you soon. All right, everybody. Have a good day. Take Thanks, care. Everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.